Hi everybody, in this video I'm gonna talk about the meniscal vascularization. One, uh, it's another important topic before we hit the road to talk about the meniscal lesions. And that's the next piece of our puzzle, the, meni the basic science meniscal puzzle. And why it's so important to know about the meniscal vascularization? Because the meniscal vascularization, it dictates the potential of the meniscal healing and the meniscal vascularization, it's not equally distributed. So it helps us to understand why we need to describe the exact place of a meniscal tear because the meniscal vascularization is different and it's not equally distributed. So it's important, the orthopedic surgeon, the, uh, they want to know where exactly the patient has a meniscal tear so they can think about what should be the better treatment for the patient. For example, uh, a tear in the periphery of the meniscus, it has a better chance uh, of healing than a tear in the central portion of the meniscus and it has everything to do with the meniscal vascularization. So we're going to talk about more uh, about the meniscal vascularization right now. And here uh, the, we have a plexus, a perimeniscal capillary plexus that goes around the meniscus, the, men, the menisci. And this plexus uh, is formed by the medial geniculate arteries and the lateral geniculate arteries. We have the superior and inferior medial and lateral geniculate arteries. And we also have the middle geniculate artery. So we have five arteries that uh, that form the sperry meniscal plexus. And uh, here we can see on this PD fat suppressed coronal imaging. Here we have the medial geniculate arteries, the superior and inferior. And here the lateral geniculate arteries, the superior and inferior. And here from behind. Uh, from the popliteal fossa, we have uh, the middle geniculate artery that will nourish the posterior horns and the root ligaments of the menisci and also the cruciate ligaments. Uh, one important observation that, that, that I'd like to make here is that sometimes uh, people can uh, can uh, made a mistake to to uh, to call the lateral inferior geniculate artery as a meniscal cyst sometimes a meniscal tear but notice first notice that this vessel it's really very close to the meniscal body the lateral meniscal body but you can follow this image in the uh, in the other cuts in the sequence you can follow the this vessel this vessel so you should be able to make the difference between uh, the lateral inferior geniculate artery and a meniscal cyst or a meniscal lesion for example but be aware of that okay so uh, but that's enough about the highways about the like the big vessels and uh, now I'd like to talk about the small streets, the alleys, the gutters, the meniscal microvascularization. That's the most important for us, how the, 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 the vascularization, how the blood is distributed to the meniscus, so how the blood is delivered to the final consumer, okay? And here we have an a, a image of a, a meniscus in the short axis, and we have three zones. Uh, three vascular zones in the meniscus okay the red zone that is the peripheral one that is vascularized we have the red white zone the trans or the transitional zone which is a vascular mainly a vascular and we have the white zone that's totally a vascular so these are the three zones of the meniscus uh, in regarding in regard to the vascularization okay and 10 to 25 percent of the periphery of the lateral meniscus is uh, the red zone comp comp uh, comp uh, composes 10 to 25 percent of the of the lateral meniscus and for the medial meniscus this number is between 10 to 30 percent uh, is the is the length of the of the periphery of the red zone on the medial meniscus and the red and white zones 
the nourishment of the of the zones it's it's not by direct vascularization but the nourishment from uh, comes from the synovial fluid via diffusion or mechanical pumping so it's not a direct vascularization it comes from nourish uh, the, from, from the synovial fluid so it it doesn't have that good uh, blood supply that the periphery of the meniscus has. So in this area right here, the red, white and the white zone, let's say that the meniscus is working in almost uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very delicate balance uh, uh, between the uh, with the nourishment that comes to to, 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 to this part of the meniscus. And when a meniscal tear happens in this region, the meniscus doesn't have the, the capability to heal a tear in this region, uh, at least without the help of uh, the orthopedic surgeons. So I, we are going to talk about that in, in this video and other videos too. And here, let's take a look at the meniscal vascularization uh, in the in the long axis of the meniscus, we saw the short axis that the meniscal vascularization is located at the periphery of the meniscus. And now let's take a look on the long axis of the meniscus. And we can see that again, the, the meniscal vascularization is located uh, in the periphery of the meniscus. But we can notice also that the vascular supply for the meniscal horns and root ligaments it's a little better than the vascular supply for the meniscal bodies. And another thing that I'd like to draw your attention here is for this area right here uh, in the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. Take a look at the periphery of the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. And we can see that this area here is not that it's not that red. It's more uh, it's more a red white or even a white zone. And the explanation of that it's because the popliteal hiatus uh, it's located here the popliteal tendon it passes right here in this region so the vessels here it, it, it they, the meniscus here in this region they the, it, it doesn't have the same quantity the same amount of vessels that uh, nourish the rest of the periphery of the lateral meniscus okay so that's an important point because the orthopedic surgeons they want to know if a uh, meniscal tear it goes to this region or not because they know that it's a tough region it's a difficult region uh, when it comes to when it comes to the healing capacity of the uh, of a meniscal tear in this region so i have a question for you and can we see the red zone on the mri and the answer we cannot differentiate by its signal at least at the clinical sequences that most of us use uh, daily but we can measure the, the 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 red zone we can measure the area or the region of the the best vascular supply of the meniscus and the red zone it measures about two to three millimeters and we can do that on, on, on our exams. For example, here we have this vertical meniscal tear right here. And the question, is this tear located only in the red zone? And let's answer that. Let's make measurements here. And when I, I measure that, I can see that, look, that red zone, it measures about two to three millimeters. So here are the three millimeters mark of the red zone but we can see that this tear uh, mainly in this inferior portion here it goes far from three millimeters it goes to 5.6 millimeters so uh, no it's not located only on the red zone it's reaching the red white zone at least maybe it's getting a little bit of the white zone and i'm going to talk about that when i talk about the isacus classifications classification of meniscal tear for example and here okay that's the isacus classification of the meniscal tear the isacus is the international society of arthroscopy knee surgery and orthopedic sports medicine and one of the points that they use like that they they, they recommend to describe a tear it's the tear location in the short axis and they uh, they divide the meniscus in three parts the zone one that is the red zone uh, it measures until 
three millimeters. We have the zone two, that is the red white zone uh, that measures between three to five millimeters. And the rest is the white zone that measures more than five millimeters from the periphery of the meniscus. Okay, so again, that's why it's so important to describe exactly where the tear is located because it will uh, it, it will uh, help the orthopedic surgeon decide what treatment uh, uh, they use they uh, the orthopedic surgeons they use. Okay. So now, I'm, although I'm not finished yet, I'm almost there, but I want to talk about another special thing about the meniscal vascularization, that is the synovial fringe. So the synovial fringe uh, are these areas right here. These are formed by uh, vascular loops. It comes from the synovial membrane that they reach this, the periphery of the, of the superior and inferior portions. Of the, of the meniscus, and it doesn't nourish the meniscal tissue directly, okay? Normally, it doesn't nourish the meniscal tissue directly, but it can become important with the right stimulus. And guess who is going to make the right stimulus? The orthopedic surgeon. So the orthopedic surgeon can make an abrasion in the synovial fringe right here, and the scar tissue that forms here, it, it communicates with the meniscus, and now the synovial fringe is in the game, and the synovial fringe can, ha can help the, with the meniscal, uh, the meniscal vascularization in this region right here, and it can help like uh, in a healing process of a lesion located at the red-white zone, for example. Uh, this procedure can help uh, increase the meniscal capability of uh, the healing capability of the meniscus, okay? And the surgeon can also make meniscal perforations uh, through the periphery to the central portion of the meniscus. That's another pr procedure that, can, they, that they can use. But again, I'd like to draw your attention to the meniscal, to the synovial fringe, because that is something that they, the orthopedic surgeons, they use to increase the meniscal vascularization in this critical zone right here between the red, uh, red white zone. So that's it. The doctors are always looking for a way to improve the meniscal vascularization and increasing the meniscal healing potential, doing that, and save in, to save in order to save the meniscus from a more aggressive treatment. And that's always what we, uh, we are trying to do. We are trying to, 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 we are trying to pull or push? I don't know. It's push, pull, pull. <laughs> we are always trying to, 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 to bring the meniscal vascularization, okay, bring, that's okay, to the, from the periphery of the meniscus to the uh, central portion of the meniscus. So that's it for this video. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for your attention. Have a great day and until next time.